Sleep is very important. They cannot have the mouth open during sleep. If you have your mouth open during sleep, it's exhausting. To yeah, the system. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because this is this is that was my next question wrapped up in what you were saying. So, so how does one control that? Obviously, when you're sleeping, uh, you're not sitting there being conscious of how you're breathing. You're asleep. Yes. So, of course, how, how do you get around? Relax. That? Um, we should be looking at position as well. Don't sleep in the back. If you sleep in the back, the tongue is more likely to go into the airway. It can increase the risk of obstructive sleep apnea. That's when we stop breathing during sleep. Um, so I want people sleeping on their side or on the front. And it would be ideal for them to wear some form of, it's a paper tape that we use. Um, you know, and the paper tape, I know it sounds a bit kind of shocking when people hear of it first, but wear it for about 15 to 20 minutes during the day. Get used to it. The just, normal just, mode of breathing just, is breathe through the nose. Sorry to interrupt. Just to clarify right. what, what you're saying, because it might not be clear to people. You're saying tape the mouth shut. Yes. Now, it's not by using duct tape or insulation tape or construction grade tape. We would use a medically based tape. Mm -hmm. um, there's even a new tape now that's come out of the United States, which is brilliant. It was developed by a dentist in Colorado called Dr. Frank Seaman. And he noticed that his patients coming in, a lot of them had bruxism or grinding of the teeth. So he'd fit crowns. He would do lovely dental work. And the next thing is they'd be coming back in a few months later and the dental work has, has been disrupted as a result of clenching of, the, of the, the jaws and grinding of the teeth. So he found it was specifically mouth breathing that was contributing to this because mouth breathing was affecting the activation of breathing during sleep and it was changing the positioning of the jaws and it was increasing the likelihood of bruxism. So he started taping. So he developed a tape called lip seal tape it's a great little tape. It's nice and easy to wear. So if, for instance, you know, probably the biggest scare that people have is I can't tape up my mouth because my nose gets blocked. Mm. But your nose only gets blocked if you breathe through your mouth. It only gets blocked fully if you breathe through your mouth. Mm. If you continue breathing through the nose, the nose opens up. And it's just as important to breathe out through the nose as it is to breathe in. Because if you breathe out through your nose, your nose captures the moisture and heat on the exhale breath. And it's the capturing of the moisture and heat that actually opens up the nose. So the difference between sleep, we looked at studies. And they have a number of studies whereby they had individuals breathe through their nose one night and breathe through their mouth another night. The, the night that they breathed through the nose, the subjects had deeper sleep they woke up more rested, and they had less obstructive sleep apnea, etc. Subjectively and objectively, they felt better. Then they had those same individuals breathe through an open mouth during sleep. One individual out of eight developed obstructive sleep apnea, merely just on the basis of open mouth breathing. They felt worse when they woke up, and also objectively, when they looked at, they spent more time in light sleep. Deep sleep is very important for repair of the human body. And we're all aware of, you know, the lymphatic system in terms of the body's natural kind of sewage waste disposal system to get rid of waste from the body. But in the brain, there's what's called the glymphatic system. And that's when the waste is mopped up, that the brain kind of, if I use the word, repairs itself or cleanses itself or restores itself. But it only happens during very deep sleep. So deep sleep is vitally important. I think for chronic fatigue, I think, I think it's really important to get sleep right. And it's not just the quantity of sleep. We have to be thinking of the quality. Now, insomnia, which can affect quite a number of people, which will lead to fatigue during the day, that can be helped significantly by really slowing down your breath and slowing down your breathing to the point that you get a slight air hunger and maintaining that slow breathing for 15 to 20 minutes before you go to sleep. We need to switch off. You can't just be go, 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 go all day. And the next thing is you need to switch, you know, you can't go from a state of constantly going, 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 and then expect to go into deep sleep. It's not going to happen. And what's worse, what do people do to relax? They look at their iPads, they stare into their mobile phones, they, they, they scroll through Facebook and all of the modern technology is sending a blue light that's reducing melatonin of the brain and it's keeping the brain in that awake sleep, in awake state, 
So they don't even get down to a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. No blue light technology, very dark room, good circulation of air, don't sleep in the back, don't drink alcohol or eat food late at night, and breathe through your nose. But more importantly, if you reduce your breathing for 15 to 20 minutes before you go to sleep, by really slowing down your breath, you'll activate that parasympathetic response, that relaxation response, and you'll have a deeper sleep. 